Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Without of Wisdom. As always, I'm your host, Zero Yeti, and it is Shark Week. Uh, the phenomenon known the world over, it's been around for over 30 years, started by the Discovery Channel and Animal Planet. Uh, and I'm going to be participating in it with doing mostly sharks this week. Uh, although we'll be extending it, although it may be blasphemous, but I am going to be extending it to cover rays and other cartilaginous fish in the family Conrixes. Just because it's my channel, it's my list, and I'm going to do it how I want to. So yeah, let's go get into it with the first animal of the week being the common thresher, also known as the Atlantic thresher or the big-eyed thresher, is the largest species of thresher shark in the family Aleopidae, uh, reaching upwards of 20 feet in length and about 1,100 pounds in weight. With a streamlined body, short pointed snout, and modestly, modestly sized eyes, the common thresher resembles and has often been confused with the pelagic thresher and other thresher species. However, it can be distinguished from other threshers by the white of its belly extending and a band over the bases of the fish's pectoral fins. The range of the common thresher encompasses tropical and temperate waters worldwide, where it typically prefers cooler waters and can be found in depths of 1,800 feet. In the Atlantic, it is found from Newfoundland down to Argentina, and in the Indo-Pacific, it can be found as far west as Tanzania to as far east as Chile, and from as far north as Japan to as far south as New Zealand. The thresher is a fast, strong swimmer. It has been known to leap clear out of the water. Uh, they possess Physiological adaptations that allow them to maintain an internal body temperature warmer than that of the surrounding seawater. They typically feed upon small schooling fish such as mackerel, bluefish, herring, anchovies, needlefish, and lanternfish, as well as invertebrates such as pelagic red crab and squid. They do this by utilizing their distinctive long tails in a whip-like fashion to deliver incapacitating blows that stun and or maim the targets. Like other mackerel sharks, the common threshers are Aplacental viparis, uh, mothers give birth to litters of two to seven pups uh, from March to June. Males mature slightly faster than females at around five years of age compared to females at seven. And under ideal conditions, common threshers are thought to live between 45 and 50 years. The next damn week is the basking shark, which is a cosmopol cosmopolitan migratory species found in all the world's temperate oceans. A slow-moving filter feeder, its common name derives from its habit of feeding at the surface, appearing to be basking in warmer water there. It has anatomical adaptations for filter feeding, such as greatly enlarged mouth and highly developed gill rakers. Its snout is conical in shape, and the gill slits extend around the top and bottom of the head. The gill rakers are dark and bristle-like and are used to catch plankton as well as, as well as filter water through the mouth and over the gills. The teeth are numerous and very small, often numbering over 100 per row. This species is the smallest weight-for-weight -weight brain size of any shark, uh, reflecting in its relatively passive lifestyle. Reaching upwards 35 feet in length and 5 tons in weight is both the second largest extant shark and the second largest extant fish species on Earth. Despite their being large and threat, despite their large size and threatening appearance, basking sharks are not aggressive and are basically harmless to humans. They are a migratory species that is often found traveling along continental shelves either alone or in small sex segregated shoals of between three and five individuals. Uh, at depths of up to 3,000 feet. Because of their enormous size, they have few predators, but have been known to have been preyed upon by great whites killer, and killer whales, as well as parasitic fish such as cookie cutter sharks and land preys. Much of the basking sharks' reproductive habits are unknown, but it is believed that mothers give birth during the summer after a year-long gestation period to an average around six pups. These pups will reach sexual maturity around 6 years of age and may live upwards to 50 years under ideal conditions. Next up is the shovel-nosed guitarfish. It is a ray in the family Reno Batidae. Uh, it, is unusually, it is usually found uh, in the surf zone and in shallow coastal waters along the Pacific coast of North America. 
where it prefers sandy and muddy bottomed areas, uh, as well as seagrass beds and estuaries at or around 30 to 45 feet in depth, although individuals have been observed at depths up to 300 feet. Chauvinose guitarfish most resemble sharks in the posterior body shape with a flattened anterior like a ray. They measure up to 5.5 feet in length and sport snouts that are pointed and shovel like, and they have broad pectoral fins. Their dorsal surfaces are smooth except for rows of small horns around the eyes and the tail. The tail is rather thick with a rounded caudal fin. Chauvinose sharks are, have two equally sized dorsal fins positioned close to the end of the tail. This species' body color ranges from a sandy brown to an olive color with a whitish underbelly. The distal end of the shark's snout is partially translucent. During the day, guitarfish will lie in ambush buried in the sand with only their eyes sticking out, waiting for an unwary crab or flatfish to wander by. At night, they leave the sand to actively cruise the seafloor to feed upon crabs, worms, clams, and other fish. Uh, Chauvinose guitarfish themselves are preyed upon by large coastal sharks and California sea lions. Both mating and pupping occurs during the summer season. Females are oviviparous, giving birth to litters of between 6 and 28 pups after a 9 to 12 month gestation period. They reach sexual maturity around 7 to 8 years of age and may live upwards of 16 years under ideal conditions. Next up is the reef manta ray which is a species in the ray family Mobluidae. Uh, it is commonly found throughout tropical and subtropical Indo-Pacific, and less commonly in the tropical Atlantic. And compared to the great oceanic manta ray, the reef manta tends to be found in shallower, more coastal habitats. The reef manta can grow in size up to 16 feet, but averages around 11 to 13 feet in width. Uh, and is dorsoventally flattened as and has large triangular pectoral fins on either side of the disc. At the front is a pair of cephalic fins, which can be rolled up in a spiral for swimming or can be flared out to channel water into a large reticular mouth when the animal is feeding. The eyes and spiracles are on the side of the head behind the cephalic fins, and the five gill slits are on the ventral surface. It is a small dorsal fin, and the tail is long whip-like, lacking the spines of the closely related devil rays. The color on the dorsal side is dark black to midnight blue, with scattered whitish grayish areas on top of the head. The ventral surface is white, sometimes with dark spots or blotches. Uh, this filter feeder sports the largest brain weight to ratio of any cold blooded fish and will often form close knit tight uh, close tight knit communities. They are also one of the few fish and one of the few animals to pass the mirror test and recognize their own reflections. Uh, they, on the surface, they can consume large quantities of zooplankton in the form of shrimp, krill, and platonic crabs. In deeper depths, mantas consume small to medium-sized fish, and when they forage, groups of mantas will slowly encircle their prey, herding it into, them into tight balls, and then the mantas will speed through the bunched up organisms with wide open mouths. If the ball is particularly dense and large, Manta ray may somersault through it. Mantas themselves are preyed upon by large sharks such as the tiger, bull, and great hammerhead, as well as cetaceans such as the false and true killer whales. The reef manta ray, like the oceanic manta ray, is ovoviparous, and after a 12 to 13 month gestation period, females will give birth to one or two pups. Research indicates that mantas may live to at least 50 years of age. Next up is the Port Jackson shark, which is a nocturnal oviparous type of bullhead shark in the family Heterodontidae. Uh, and it can be found in coastal regions surrounding New Zealand and southern Australia, including the waters off Port Jackson. It, is a large, it has a large square blunt head with a prominent forehead ridges and a dark brown harness-like markings of the lighter gray-brown body, and they can grow up to five and a half feet in length. Uh, both dorsal fins are close to, to equal in size, each sporting a mildly venomous spine on the foremost edge. The teeth of the Port Jackson shark are one of the most distinguishable features as they are different in front and back. 
The front teeth are small, sharp, and pointed, while the back teeth are flat and blunt. This arrangement is perfect to hold, break, then crush and grind the shells of mollusks and echinoderms. Uh, it is a migratory animal, traveling south in the summer and returning north to breed in the winter. A somewhat social species, uh, the poor giant sharks can be found congregating throughout underwater caves and around rocky outcrops, emerging at night to feed upon sea urchins, starfish, mollusks, crustaceans, and small fish. Poor Jackson sharks themselves are occasionally preyed upon by seals, sea lions, and other sharks. They are oviparous, meaning that they lay eggs rather than give live birth to the young like most other sharks we've covered. And the species has an annual breeding cycle which begins in late August and continues until the middle of November. During this time, the female lays a pairs of corkscrew-shaped eggs every 10 to 14 days, and as many as 8 pairs can be laid during this period. The eggs mature at around 10 to 11 months before hatch the hatchlings, known as neonates, break out of the egg capsule. Males reach sexual maturity earlier than females at around 8 to 10 years compared to 11 to 14 for females. Under ideal conditions, poor Jackson sharks have been known to live more than 30 years. Next up is the spear-toothed shark, which is an extremely rare species of river shark, belonging to the family Carcarhenidae, uh, where they inhabit large tropical rivers and estuaries throughout northern Australia and New Guinea. Despite being a member of the river shark genus, it is also found in nearshore marine waters, favoring highly turbid environments over a range of salinities. This robustly built gray-colored shark is characteristic characterized by a short and broad snout, tiny eyes, and a relatively large second dorsal fin, as well as black blotches near each pectoral fin tips. Another identifying trait of this are the shark is its teeth, which are large triangular and serrated in the upper jaw and narrow and spear-like uh, in the lower jaw. Adults grow to around eight and a half feet in length, uh, and the spear tooth shark is adept at catching bony fishes and crustaceans, and its diet primarily consists of bomb dwelling fish such as gobies, gungeons, catfish, and stingrays. The spear tooth sharks themselves are preyed upon by crocodiles and other large sharks. As in other requiem sharks, the spear tooth shark is in viparous, and birthing seems to occur between October to December, near the end of the dry season, with mothers typically giving having litters around five to seven pups. The spear-toothed shark is not known to pose a danger to humans, uh, and it is extremely rare like other river sharks, with its global population being estimated to number more, no more than 2,500 mature individuals, uh, and is considered endangered. Today, spear-toothed sharks face several ongoing threats, such as being caught both incidentally by commercial fisheries using gill nets and long lines, as well as intentionally by recreational anglers and bowfishers. Possibly a greater threat to the species is that of pollution and habitat destruction, which has isolated the sharks in ever smaller and isolated pockets, and today they number no more than 250 in any one subpopulation. In our extinct animal week is not Megalodon. I will cover Megalodon eventually, but so many people are covering Megalodon for Shark Week, it's ridiculous. I'm covering another cool cartilaginous fish, which is Helicoprion, meaning the spiral saw, and is an extinct genus of uniogeodont cartilaginous fish that first rose in the ocean of the Lake Carboniferous approximately 280 million years ago. And they survived the Triassic, well, the Permian Triassic extinction event, which wiped out most life of Earth, most of life on Earth. Although they did eventually go extinct uh, near the in, near the Triassic extinction, some 225 million years ago, remains have been found worldwide as the genus is known from Russia, Australia, China, Kazakhstan, Japan, Laos, Norway, Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Most of all fossil specimens of, are of the, the spirally arranged clusters of the individual's teeth called tooth whorls. Uh, Russian paleontologist Ad Adrzejk P. Karpinsky, Karpinsky was first to find and describe a specimen in 1899, which he found in the Ural Mountains. He would later invest several years of his life in a futile attempts to restore the animal, illustrating various possible positions of the tooth whorl 
from the top of the dorsal fin to hang from the top of the tail, as well as placed in the whorl on the tip of the nose. Over the next several decades, the placement of the whorl would be a constant source of debate, and it wasn't until the discovery of a skull of a relative, Ornithoprion, that it was realized that the tooth whorl belonged in the lower jaw. Helicoprion sported a streamlined torpedo body plan with triangular pectoral fins, a large dorsal fin with a, without a fin spine, and a tall forked caudal fin. This general body plan is shared by several active open water predatory fish, such as tuna, swordfish, and laminid sharks. Based on the proportional size of the tooth whorls, helicoprion individuals could have reached over 25 feet in length, rivaling the size of modern basking sharks. In life, helicoprion would have fed upon arthropods, small fish, and especially cephalopods, such as alanoids and nautiloids, by using its iconic tooth whorl like a rotating saw to slice open its prey. Today, the strange and unusual chimeras are the helicoprion's closest living relatives. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Also, happy Shark Week!